Today we're going to talk about a tool called EmuDeck for your Steam Deck. EmuDeck downloads, installs, and configures multiple emulators so that you can easily enjoy emulation on your Steam Deck. It takes care of the RetroArch configuration, your controls, aspect ratio setup, and much more. EmuDeck was recently updated to version 2, which makes it even easier. In this video, we'll step through the installation and discuss the new tools available. To complement this video, you will find a link in the description below to a written guide which will step you through the entire process along with links and additional information. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. To install EmuDeck, you'll of course need a Steam Deck. Any 64, 256, or 512 gigabyte model will be just fine. The internal storage of the Steam Deck is ideal for larger games. Many emulated games, in comparison, are going to be smaller files. It's for that reason I recommend using a micro SD card for installing EmuDeck. If you'll be installing a new micro SD card, you'll want to press the Steam button, then go to Settings, System, and make sure you format the micro SD card here. Once done, it'll be available for installing additional games and of course, EmuDeck as well. To make the installation process easier, you may want to consider picking up a dock. You can use the official Steam Deck dock or a third-party dock such as this one. I'll be using Ethernet for transferring my games and BIOS files from my NAS. I'll plug in the HDMI cable to make it easier for you to see the installation process power to the dock, and a keyboard and mouse. You can certainly do the same thing using the Steam Deck itself. I'll place the deck in the dock and connect the USB-C cable from the dock to the deck, and the video signal will then be transitioned over to the portable monitor. To make the setup easier for you to see, let's switch over to the video capture. Press the Steam button, then select the power option and switch to desktop. I've removed the prior version of EmuDeck I had on my machine, if you need instructions on how to do the same, there's a section on that in the guide link below. Now we'll launch the Firefox browser from the icon in the lower left and enter emudeck.com. Then when we look to the far right, there's a link to the download page. Click the download installer option and click the OK button when prompted. The download will go quick. It's a very small file. We'll click the show all downloads and then drag and drop the emudeck.desktop file onto your desktop and select move here. Double click the install emudeck file and click continue. You will then be prompted as to which mode you wish to use for installing emudeck. I recommend using the custom mode. It has a great new interface for easily customizing the emulators that get installed setting aspect ratios, and much more. So go ahead and select custom mode and click the continue button. You'll now be prompted where you would like your game stored. If you have a micro SD card installed, I'd recommend using it, and that's the option I'll take here. Select SD card and click next. EmuDeck now supports the Steam Deck as well as the Embernic Win 600 using Hollow ISO. However, in our case, just select Steam Deck and click continue. At this step, you can decide which emulators you do or don't want to install. For example, Dolphin is for the Wii and Wii U, PCSX2 is for PS2, and so on. I do want to mention MAME is unchecked by default. If you enjoy playing classic arcade games from the late 70s or the early 2000s, you'll want to select this option. Once everything looks good, click the Continue button. By default, EmuDeck will overwrite all the emulator configurations. If you have any configurations you don't want changed, you can uncheck it. However, it's recommended that you allow overriding the configuration, so I'll just click continue here. Retro Achievements is an option available in those emulators that use RetroArch and awards you with achievements as you progress within a game. This step is optional. You can click skip or enter your Retro Achievements username and password if you have one. If you don't have a free account, you can click the link to create one. You can skip this step or come back to it later. Here you can set if you want the game bezels either on or off. I prefer the bezels as opposed to just a black border, so I'll leave them on and click continue. If you want to set the aspect ratio for your Sega games, you have two options, either 4x3 or 3x2. 
I'll leave it set at 4x3 and click continue. For Super NES, you have three different options. Select the one you prefer and move on to the next. For N64 and Dreamcast 3D games, you can select 4x3 or 16x9 using widescreen hex, which doesn't stretch the display, but I still prefer 4x3 here. For GameCube, you can select 4x3 or 16x9 with widescreen hex. I'll leave it at 4x3. The LCD shader for various handhelds can be enabled that will simulate the LCD display of each. I'll leave it at the default of off in this case. The CRT shader for classic 2D games looks pretty decent to me. Some may not like them, but uh, I'm going to turn it on and proceed to the next one. Likewise, for classic 3D games, CRT shaders is something I prefer, so I'll set it to on and click continue. Emudeck also installs Emulation Station. If you're familiar with it on a Raspberry Pi or other retro gaming handhelds, you'll be right at home here. There are three different selectable themes, and I'm going to go with the modern theme. We are now done with all the selections and can click the finish button to install and configure our emulators. As you can see, Emudeck has made the installation and configuration of all our emulators extremely easy. What would normally take hours of tweaking and configuring can be done in a matter of minutes. You can always come back and easily make changes if you don't like how things were said initially. But from here, we'll click the exit button, and in the next step, we'll discuss BIOS and ROMs. When it comes to copying your games and BIOS files to your Steam Deck, there are a number of ways you can do it. If you have a dock, just copy the files to a USB stick and plug it into the USB port on the dock. You can also use a wireless keyboard, such as this Bluetooth folding keyboard with a USB Type-A to Type-C adapter. Plug in your USB stick and transfer the files that way also. In the lower left, you'll see I have two removable devices. The primary is the micro SD card used by SteamOS. The basic data partition is a FAT32 formatted USB stick that contains BIOS and game or ROM files. You'll use the Dolphin File Manager to transfer files to your Steam Deck. You'll typically want to open two instances of it, one pointing at the location of your files and the other to the location on the Steam Deck where you want to copy the files. On the left, I have my BIOS and ROMs that I want to copy. And on the right hand side, I have the primary removable drive selected, which is the micro SD card used by the Steam Deck. At the root level, we see the emulation subdirectory that Emudeck created. There we have some important folders such as BIOS and ROMs. Now let's talk a bit more about that. In case you're not already familiar, BIOS is the firmware used by a gaming system which provides runtime services, the hardware initialization, and basically tells the device how to interact with these components. Many consoles and emulators will require the correct BIOS files to play the games within the associated emulator. Similarly, ROMs are the games themselves. It's the program code from the original game, which may have originated from a game cartridge, floppy disks, CDs, or DVDs. Both BIOS and ROM files are copyrighted material, and I'm therefore unable to provide links to them. However, read this section carefully for some hints that you may find helpful in locating them. You could download the files directly from the internet on the Steam Deck. However, you may already have collections of BIOS and ROM files. In that case, copying from a USB stick or from a NAS or network attached storage may be more convenient. Now let's assume you've downloaded an archive of BIOS files to your PC or NAS. Simply copy the BIOS files to the Emulation BIOS subfolder on the Steam Deck. For the games themselves, after downloading them, you'll find under the Emulation ROMs subfolder there will be a number of individual folders for each game system. I recommend not dumping a massive number of games in each folder. I started this way myself and later found it's much easier to go through and pick the games that I really want to play versus a massive ROM dump. Totally up to you, but I think you'll have a much better experience. After copying the BIOS and game files, it's now time to move on to the Steam ROM Manager. Now that we've copied our games, it's now time to make them available to Steam. To do that, we'll use an application called Steam ROM Manager. Launch the Emudeck icon, 
And from there, you'll see two options to perform a quick update or a custom update. At this time, no update is needed, so we'll move down to the lower right and select the button Tools and Stuff. There, a number of helpful tools are available that we'll discuss in a few moments. However, the one we're interested in right now is on the far right called Steam ROM Manager. You will then see this dialog stating your desktop controls will temporarily revert to the trackpad and L2 and R2 buttons. This will allow you to more easily use the deck, but in my case I'll be using the mouse and keyboard. When you first launch Steam ROM Manager, the UI may initially appear a bit intimidating, but no worries, it's really pretty easy. On the left hand side, you'll see the parsers that are available, and these parsers are used to identify the games located in the ROM subfolder. If you want to manually turn off specific parsers, you certainly can by flipping the toggle switch beside parsers, and then manually doing the same for each of the systems you're interested in. However, in my experience with it, unless there are game files in the respective folders, it will simply report zero games in the collections tab on the Steam Deck. That may change in the future, but that is what I'm seeing with the current version. So I just leave the switch for all parsers enabled. Additionally, you can click on a specific parser and find additional configuration options for the selected parser on the right side. I haven't found the need to modify the presets, but it may be helpful at some point, and just know that changes can be made if needed. There is a very large list of parsers that cover all of the supported emulators. However, it's the preview option that is the most important option to remember. After clicking preview, click the generate at list button at the bottom. The Steam ROM Manager will then begin downloading the artwork for the games and emulators. Wait until the remaining providers is done. Then, one thing I like to do is click the Event Log option and make sure it reports that all available image URLs were retrieved. Going back to the Preview option, we'll start to see images for many of our games. Some of the artwork may be correct, others may be missing or set incorrectly. For example, Speedball for the Amiga has no artwork. If we already have artwork that we downloaded previously, just click the small image icon in the lower right, select the image, and the Open button. Now, the artwork has been assigned. There will be other cases where the artwork does exist, but you may need to select it. For the classic arcade game of Donkey Kong, we'll click the arrow left or right and select one that makes sense. That one looks good. In yet other cases, the game name may be entirely incorrect. This game is being reported as Magus Overfull, <laughs> which is a game I've never heard of, but the game is actually the 1981 release of Gorf. There is not currently an option to rename the game. Hopefully that'll be added in a future update. So there are some bugs to be worked out, but for the most part, it does a decent job. This is another one of the reasons why I recommend not dumping a huge number of ROMs and only picking those that you really want to play. At this point, you may be wondering where you can go to download the artwork if you don't already have it. Looking at the resources section on the EmuDeck guide, you'll find the Steam Grid DB link. Click that and then type in the name of the game, for example, Sinistar. Here we have two different kinds of artwork, the poster or portrait artwork and the grid art, which we've currently been using. Click the download button and then right click and select save image as and then give it a meaningful name and then click save. Now click the image icon, go to downloads and select Sinistar and the open button and now our artwork will be assigned. In the upper right, click the drop down for select type and select posters. Posters are important images that you'll see when navigating the list of games for a given emulator on the Steam Deck. You'll want to perform the same steps here for all the images using the portrait or poster version of the game image. It will be done in the same exact way as the grid images that we already covered, so you should already know what to do here. After you've got the artwork just how you want it, this is the most important step next. Towards the bottom middle, Click the Save App List button. You'll then see a brief toast message stating merging VDF entries. I then like to click the Event Log and make sure that I see Done Adding and Removing Entries. If you exit without double checking this, the save may not have been completed and you might have to do it all over again. 
Now we can move to the upper right and close out of the Steam ROM Manager. Now let's quickly go over some of the new tools available in Emudeck. In the Tools and Stuff section that we briefly mentioned, you'll find some very useful utilities that will improve your experience with Emudeck. First, let's take a look at the Power Tools. To install it, you will need to assign a pseudo password. Just enter your password and click the button to assign it. Then enter your password again and click the Install Power Tools button. Then on the Steam Deck, when you're in a game, you can press the Quick Access button, the one with the three dots, move down to the Plug option, and tweak the game performance by setting the number of threads and GPU limits. If you'd like to be able to use the gyroscope on the Steam Deck with your Wii U games within the CMU emulator, you can install the Gyro DSU plugin. The Emudeck Compression Tool option can help save storage by compressing your game ROMs. Under the Update Your Emulators and Tools option, you can keep all the Discover Store apps as well as the app images up to date. The Quick Settings option allows adjusting prior settings you had made during the initial install of Emudeck, including bezels, aspect ratios, and shader selection, all from within a convenient user interface. Within the Check BIOS option, if you're having issues loading some games, this tool will make it easier to check if one of the emulators are missing BIOS files. Not all systems require a BIOS, and there are some that aren't being checked by this tool, but it can be helpful in identifying some missing BIOS files. The Save Backup option is currently in beta and allows you to backup your game saves to the cloud. This feature will be handy in the future for sharing game saves across multiple devices such as the Steam Deck and maybe the Win 600. We've already covered the Steam ROM Manager, so we'll skip over that. There are additional options to explore, such as the ability to reset your configuration if something gets royally hosed up, and if you no longer wish to have Emudeck installed on your Steam Deck, you can use this option to remove it. With everything all set up and ready to go, double click the desktop icon to return to gaming mode. You'll find a new collections tab which contains all the games and emulators that you've made available from the Steam ROM Manager. You can select one and start playing. If you move over to the emulation tile, there you'll find all the individual emulators that were installed in addition to the emulation station front end. Within Emulation Station, all of your games are also available here as well. You can press the Start button to enter the menu to scrape artwork, change themes, and much more. One thing that I did wind up changing is in Steam ROM Manager, I did uncheck the parsers for MAME and copied the complete MAME 2003 Plus ROM set. That way, they don't show up in Steam, but can be played within Emulation Station. The CRT shaders look very good and very much like how the actual machines look back in the day. So yeah, Emudeck makes it easy to get started with emulation on your Steam Deck. Playing games from the 1970s to even some recent systems is now possible. That brings us to the end of another video. I hope you've seen how easy it is to set up Emudeck version 2 on your Steam Deck. I want to express a huge thank you to the developers of both the emulators and the Emudeck team for creating such an impressive suite of tools for playing our favorite games. I want to remind you to check out the guide link below. It will have the latest information on Emudeck and additional tips that you may find helpful. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you would like to see more content like this in the future please click the subscribe button. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.